Unity has some really handy functions built in to help you determine if two objects are overlapping one another in a 2D space. However, this does not allow you to differentiate between if the objects are partially overlapping or fully overlapping. To demonstrate this, let's say you have two objects. As you can see, these two objects do not overlap each other at all. Now, if we move them together, the objects now partially overlap each other. However, they do not fully overlap each other, as you see part of the circle is hanging off the edge of the square. If we were to move the circle, the objects now fully overlap each other. For my Bloons Tower Defense clone that I'm making, I wanted to give the players the ability to place certain towers directly on the path. However, I wanted to make sure that the tower is not partially hanging off of the path. And again, it's really easy to check if these objects are at least partially overlapping, but we do have to do some extra work to determine if the objects fully overlap each other. And so that is what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. Before we get into it, I'd just like to say if you do find today's video helpful and you learned something, I would really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more content on video game development. I do have a lot of really cool things coming to the channel that I don't think that you're going to want to miss out on, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Anyways, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. Now, today's video is mostly going to be focused on the theory of this solution that I came up with rather than the coding bit. I will be going over how to actually implement this in Unity and C Sharp, but for something like this and a lot of programming problems in general, once you fully understand the problem and you fully understand the solution, actually implementing it in code is pretty easy and straightforward. So hopefully with that introduction, you now understand the problem that we're trying to solve. Again, we wanna make sure one object is fully overlapping another and a part of it isn't like hanging off the edge or anything like that. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Unity has some methods that can detect overlaps in a 2D space. And these are specifically the collider 2D.overlap collider, as well as the physics 2D.overlap collider. Now, if either of these methods return true, we can determine one of two things either one object is partially overlapping another or one object is fully overlapping another. Again, in our case, we wanna check if an object is fully overlapping another object. Now, these methods aren't going to be entirely useless to us because we can still use them to determine if the objects are at least partially overlapping before we can check you know, further if the objects are fully overlapping. Now, there's no sense in running the functions that I came up with to check for a full overlap if the objects aren't at least partially overlapping each other. So once we know that the objects are at least partially overlapping each other, how do we check if the objects are fully overlapping each other. Now, depending on the size and shape of the objects in your game, you may need to tweak the implementation a little bit to fit the needs of your project. But the way that I came up with it for my game is I basically check um, for overlaps around some various points around the perimeter of the circle collider, as well as in the center of the circle collider itself. So basically I predefine eight points around the perimeter of the circle collider and the center point of the circle collider. And then I iterate through each of these points to check whether or not that specific point overlaps with the target collider that I want to check against. If it does, then we can continue down the list to the next point and the next point the next point and then if one of the points does not overlap the target object then we know that that object is not fully overlapping the other one now, of course this methodology isn't 100 percent accurate and there may be some weird cases where um, it could return true if you know these these things aren't necessarily exactly overlapping each other if there are kind of some weird shapes and stuff like that but i know that at least for my game this will reliably give me the results that i'm looking for because the way that I've designed my game, you know, I'm never going to get into one of those cases where one of those weird edge cases are met where this function returns true when it shouldn't actually return true. All right, so as promised, I'm gonna show off the coding bit of this. So as you can see, I'm in my tower placement controller. Um, basically the end all be all of what we're looking for is I have this property called is fully on path. And you'll see that I'm using the expression body member here. Basically, this is just going to uh, return the values of what this evaluates to. Now you see that first I'm checking for if it's partially on the path. Again, like I mentioned before, we wanna check to see if the object is at least partially overlapping with the other object that we're looking for. In this case, it's going to be the tower and the balloon path. Now, when we have this and operator, if the partially on path value returns false, 
then we're not gonna check if we're fully on the path, like I mentioned earlier. So again, if we're not at least partially on the path, then there's no need for us to check if we're fully on the path. So this partially on the path, this is just a local bool variable. And I'm actually setting this within the trigger events. So for the on trigger enter, you'll see that I'm setting the partially on path equal to true. Of course, if we're colliding with the path layer, and then if we exit the path layer, then you'll see that I set that partially on path value to false. And so I chose to use the trigger functions just so I'm not checking every single frame, whether we're you know partially overlapping with these objects. So now back up to this property. Again, if this partially on path returns true, then we can go ahead and check if we are fully on the path. So to check if we're fully on the path, this is just this function here. And then again, it just goes through each of these things that I just call the edge points. And it basically just kind of goes around the circle as well as checks in the direct center of the circle collider. So you see all that we're doing is the physics 2D dot overlap point. And then we're gonna do that uh, at the point to check. So again, this is the individual points around the perimeter of the circle as well as in the center. And then we'll also do a layer mask for the path layer. So we're only checking things that are part of the path layer. So if that specific point does overlap with the path, then we are going to set a value in this path collider. However, if this path collider value is equal to null, meaning that point is not overlapping with the path, then we'll just go ahead and return false out of this function here. Otherwise, if we go through and check all the points and they're all overlapping with the path, then we can just return true out of this function here. And in case you wanted to see how I'm setting up these edge points here, I just have this setup edge points function that gets called in the start method on the tower placement controller script. And basically we're just defining a new array. We're gonna set the first element of the array to vector 3.0. So it's checking in the immediate center. And then we'll do a for loop here and then just some basic trigonometry to find out the position of each location you know, around that circle. And that's essentially how we populate the array of points to check. Now, if you're using something like a box collider, you could always use the size properties to calculate all the different corners. Um, and if you're even using something like a polygon collider, then it's going to be even easier for you because there is an array of all these points and you can just get that and then use to check those edge points. All right, so now to go ahead and demonstrate this in Unity, I just have this, say, dart tower here, which is just kind of the standard monkey tower. Of course, this one is one of the ones where you can place just anywhere in the world and you'll see that um, you know, this is a valid position. If we try and go on the path, then it's gonna give us a big red warning here. So of course we can just click to go ahead and place that tower. Now I have another tower and uh, this just kind of for testing, uh, again, just ignore that it's, it's the exact same renderer as the other one. Um, but you'll see that when I'm on the grass here, this is uh, showing as red, so it's invalid. We can't place it there. However, if we go over the path, now you see we're halfway on the path, it's still red. And then when we go fully over the path, now you'll see that it, this is a valid spot that we can put it on. So we can click there to place that. And just to kind of show you this working, like this works on the corners, you know, if we're, you know, just kind of partially overlapping, it's gonna be red. And then we go on and then it's, you'll see that it's valid, you know, when we're, we're fully overlapped, we're not like partially hanging off the edge, which is exactly the behavior that I was going for. And I hope that this helps you out with whatever that you are trying to do in your game. All right, and so that is the general methodology that I came up with to determine if one object fully overlaps another object. Again, this isn't 100% accurate, but it is good enough for my game because it reliably gives me the result that I'm looking for. Anyways, if you did enjoy today's video, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about game development and some other really cool things coming to the channel very, very soon that you won't want to miss. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.